Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Cecilia Savajan. I am the Database Information Specialist at Travel Oregon. And today we're going to le learn the basics of managing your Google business profile. And I would like to welcome our presenter today, Kim Palmer with Miles Partnership. Cecilia, and thanks everyone for joining us today. We are going to do a quick 30 minute session on Google Business Profile Fundamentals. Uh, I work with Miles Partnership. We are a strategic co marketing company exclusively in the travel and tourism industry. Uh, my team has been involved in something called the Destination Optimization Program for the last seven years, where we work with destinations and local businesses to improve digital presence on Google, TripAdvisor, and other leading platforms. Um, as a result of that, we do a lot of uh, focus on the Google platform and how travel businesses can make the most of their digital presence on this platform. So I'm going to jump right in to just a couple of the headlines about why this is important to your business. And it's really about both making a first impression and providing potential customers with the information that they need. There's a really good chance that your website is not the first place a uh, potential customer is going to be introduced to your business. And while it's not as sexy as social media, online listings on major platforms are an important element of your digital representation. Uh, we're going to talk about Google here today, but I also wanted to start by taking a moment to acknowledge that your business probably also has a presence on some of these other platforms. Uh, Apple Maps, TripAdvisor, Bing, and Yelp are probably the largest uh, in that field. And while they don't have, um, with the exception of TripAdvisor, I suppose, as many uh, tools available as Google uh, provides for free to businesses. It's uh, many of the things that we'll talk about here today. It's just as important to double check that that same information is current on other digital platforms as well. So what is your Google business profile? Well, chances are it's the first thing a potential customer may see about your business. And it is likely the single most significant source of organic, unpaid exposure for your business online. Uh, this is an example of a business profile uh, from the desktop that's showing uh, the film museum, uh, but also because 65% of Google searches happen on mobile, uh, your business profile uh, also shows up uh, in a similar format on mobile platforms uh, as well. Now, this is important because of the size and reach and scale of Google and their network or their ecosystem of products. Your Google business profile is a single central source of information about your business that propagates across all of Google products. So that single profile is the content that's being drawn from in search, uh, in Google Maps, in Google travel products, and as generative AI evolves over time, Google Gemini is also referencing Google business profiles for content, which is another new reason uh, why this content uh, is important. Business profiles are going to help your prospective customers find out things like what your products and services are, what your hours are, where you're located, how to get to you from where they're at, uh, reviews and ratings, feedback from other customers, uh, as well as photos and videos of what the on-the-ground experience is like at your business. Research has shown that uh, businesses that keep a current and complete Google business profile are 2.7 times more likely to be considered reputable by a prospective customer, 70% more likely to attract location visits, and 50% more likely to lead to a purchase. And that's all great news for your business uh, and all the more reason to keep your Google business profile current. Now, there's a very important first step in managing your Google business profile, and that is to claim and verify your ownership of that profile. 
Um, this process is uh, the mechanism by which Google identifies who are rightful representatives of a business who should be given act full access to the content about um, that business. Now, this is a two-step process, uh, claiming, which is basically raising your hand and saying, yes, I'm a representative of this business, and then verification, where we go through a method, much like getting into your bank account, uh, where you verify that you really are a rightful representative of that property. Uh, I do want to call out, uh, I know we had this question beforehand, uh, that if you're getting phone calls or emails from anyone who says they are Google and they are going to help you claim your business and they want to charge you for it, um, they are not Google. Google never proactively calls uh, a business. The only phone calls Google tends to do is, and I think they're robocalls anyway, is verification of hours. Um, but if you're getting someone calling you and, and saying, um, they want to help you with your Google business profile. They are a third party business and not Google themselves. Now, before you claim your Google business profile, you're going to have to have a Google account. Uh, this can be a Gmail account, or you can register an existing email address as a Google uh, account. Uh, this is at accounts.google.com slash signup. Um, once you have that account in place, and are logged into it, you want to go to Google Maps. If your business is not claimed and verified, you're going to see this little shield icon that says claim this business. And you want to click on this icon uh, to begin the verification process. If there is no profile for your business in Apple or in Google Maps, uh, you want to use the menu to click the add your business button. The second step uh, is to verify that you are a representative of the business. Um, that will, what options you are given depends on the type of business you are. Um, the good news is we're seeing postcard uh, really being phased out as an option. Verification by phone is fairly common, but does require that you be able to answer the call when it comes in. Uh, we're also seeing the growth of uh, business video being used as a verification step. Uh, once you have completed that verification, you're going to now get full access to the free tools provided by Google to manage your profile. Um, other than paid advertising, Google does not have paid tools. Um, so again, if someone is asking for you to pay for the tools, uh, that is a third party. Um, you can see in these examples here, both on desktop and on mobile, when I'm logged into the account that manages my Google business profile, I'm going to see these tools at the top of the screen around editing, responding to reviews, adding photography, uh, et cetera. So this is the interface you can expect to see. Um, now, I know we're doing this uh, pretty quickly today, but I wanted to call out that as a part of the program that Travel Oregon is providing to our uh, Oregon businesses, you do have the ability to book a absolutely free one-on-one -on -one conversation with my team. Uh, we can help walk you through this verification and claiming process. If you have questions, if you've encountered a roadblock, uh, we can try to help. Uh, I don't have a silver bullet or a, a, the bat phone to Google to necessarily um, bypass any of this process, but we've been doing this for a lot of years uh, and can often help walk you through. So I know I went through claiming and verification pretty quickly, but if you would like that one-on-one -on -one help, uh, that link will be a part uh, of the content that Travel Oregon will share following this presentation. <clears throat> So next, we're going to talk about the five fundamental things you should do to maximize your visibility and conversion uh, with your Google business profile. There are a lot of free tools in here, but these are the five most important things that you can do to get started. Uh, I always emphasize to businesses to start with your hours. And that's because if we look at search behavior from consumers, searches for open now, open now near me, 
um, are things that have increased exponentially over the last uh, several years. And if you look at your own personal behavior, how often are you looking uh, on Google Maps or in Google to see if something is open now, what time does it close? Is it open tomorrow, et cetera? So I always recommend starting there. Uh, in our interface, there's a tab specifically for hours um, under edit your uh, profile. Um, if you look in this hours tab, the first part here is going to allow you to select uh, your uh, seven days a week uh, hours. You, there is also an option to make yourself open with no main hours uh, if that uh, works better for your business. So always keep this up to date. If your hours change seasonally, make sure that you're logging in and adjusting for those seasonal changes. Uh, there are some other options. Uh, there's one in here called detailed hours. This is particularly relevant in the restaurant uh, space where I can put hours for specific types of meals. Um, but there's also things like online service or just plain access. Um, and there is also the ability to control hours by specific dates. It's very important that even if your holiday hours are the same as your regular hours, that you put your holiday hours in here so that it shows up as verified uh, to potential customers. This is also a great tool if you need to close on a specific day, close early, uh, stay open late, et cetera, for special circumstances, you can also address that here. The second thing to take a look at is what categories you have selected for your business. Now you're gonna be required to have a primary category and that should be the one that is most relevant to what your business is and the products and services that you provide. But in most cases, our businesses may fall in multiple categories. We may provide a variety of products and services to our customers. And the more categories I add to the business, the more opportunities I'm creating to be found. So if my restaurant is not only a fine dining restaurant, but a seafood restaurant and an organic restaurant and a steak restaurant, adding all of those different categories makes me more likely to come up for a search for something like seafood restaurant. These are also found uh, within edit profile. Uh, under business category, uh, which is here under about, you can see you can designate one as primary, and then you can add up to nine additional categories. There are 4,000 uh, categories available for you to choose from that are updated every year. Um, so I'm pretty confident you're going to find at least one other that could potentially apply to your business. The third best practice for us to take a look at is adding attributes. Attributes um, create com customer confidence that your business is going to meet their needs. Uh, this is where you can really fill in the fine details about your, your products and services. You can see in some examples here, uh, for example, if I'm looking for restaurants that provide takeout, uh, if I haven't put takeout in as one of my attributes, then I'm not going to show up in that search. We're also seeing, um, I think there are almost a dozen now diversity attributes that we can choose uh, for our business. And so uh, if someone is searching for black owned restaurants, uh, having that uh, feature identified will uh, help you come up in those search results. So both categories and attributes kind of work hand in hand. Which attributes we get to choose from depends on what business category we are in. So if I'm a hotel, um, I'm going to get uh, different attributes to choose from than if I'm a restaurant or a spa or a tour operator. Um, so you're going to want to look in edit profile uh, in this more tab here, and that's where you're going to see um, which attributes you have available to choose from. Uh, this is also where we find things about accessibility. Uh, there are also, uh, particularly in the rest or excuse me, in the lodging space, lodging properties have the most attributes, literally um, 
couple hundred of them, I think, to choose from. And some of them are, some of the newer ones are eco, um, uh, eco attributes of different um, environmentally friendly practices that your lodging may provide. Uh, I do recommend that periodically throughout the year, maybe once a quarter, uh, at least twice a year that you go in and take a look at uh, the attributes and categories that are available. Uh, new things do get added on a fairly regular cadence and you wanna make sure that you're capturing everything that is relevant to your business. The more that you've captured there, the more likely you're going to match with someone's uh, search results. <clears throat> um, the fourth best practice is for the ability that we have to add products and services to our um, profile. And, and this again sort of cascades from business category attributes, whether you have menu or product or service available for you to choose from will depend on what kind of business that you are. So quite obviously restaurants have the ability to add menu items and submenus like lunch, dinner, and dessert. Uh, your menus can also include photography, prices, and descriptions. Um, so you can keep your restaurant menu items up to date. Um, but very similar to restaurant menus are product and service menus. These apply to places like spas and tour operators. Uh, in most cases, service menus are going to be something where you pick from the options that Google makes available to you. So you see we have an example here from a travel agency and they've got things selected like booking airplane tickets, booking services, train reservations. These are things that have actually been selected from a list provided by Google. However, some business categories do have uh, for products, the ability to be more customized. Uh, a product menu will allow you to upload a photo and write your own description of that product, as well as provide a link to that product where it can be purchased or booked. <clears throat> Um, now, as I've mentioned, there's there's a relationship between category attributes and product and service menus. Um, something to think about uh, as you're thinking about categories is that by choosing different business categories, you can potentially open up uh, different services and product menus. This is particularly relevant for lodging. You can see in this example here, this is a hotel property but they've added event venue and wedding venue as a couple of their business categories. Because of that, um, and they're also a marina too. So you see on the, the right-hand side of the screen here, they now have a services menu that includes all of the different uh, ways that their uh, location can be used as an event venue, services in their marina, services that they have for weddings, uh, et cetera. Again, all good things. If I'm going to do a search for uh, baby shower planning, uh, this location is more likely to come up in a search uh, for something that specific. <clears throat> uh, the next thing on our list is responding to customer reviews. Uh, you'll notice that your business has a star rating uh, on your Google profile. That star rating is the average of the ratings that have been received from all of the reviews your business has ever received. So it's important to encourage happy customers to leave reviews, um, but it's also equally important to respond to as many reviews as possible. Uh, this really shows our customers that we are listening and that we care and that makes a great first impression on other potential customers as well. And we've seen this reflected in the data. Now, I know it's probably unrealistic to ask you to respond to all of your reviews. Um, however, this graph is showing us that businesses that respond to 30% of their reviews 
versus 10% have an 80% higher conversion rate. So that's the difference between responding to one out of 10 versus three out of 10 reviews, which is a little less daunting, right? Than uh, trying to respond uh, to all of them. Uh, to respond and review your customer reviews, if you're on desktop, you're going to be looking at this read reviews link here. And uh, on mobile, it's nice because the reply button is actually integrated into each review, making it easy for you to just click here to respond uh, to your customers. <clears throat> now, lastly, uh, our last recommendation is to focus on your photography and video. One of the things that we've seen in search results is that search results are much more visual than they used to be in the past. Uh, if you remember the days where Google search results were just 10 blue links, uh, but today we're seeing video clips, we're seeing photography integrated into those search results. And the same is true for our business profiles. Rather than just showing one or two images, you can see that this business profile has an entire collage of both images and short video clips. These are a combination of content that has been provided by the business owner, as well as content that has been provided by customers. And they're kind of mixed in there. In fact, sometimes we see snippets from customer reviews overlaying some of the photos as well. Um, so photos are a key part of how our potential customers are making decisions about uh, our business. Uh, again, there's research to back this up. Not only does photo quality matter, but so does quantity. Uh, businesses with more than 100 images have a significantly higher exposure rate. So they're getting many more visits to their profile than those um, even with just 50 to 100. Now, user-generated content does uh, count towards those numbers. So in addition to um, sharing the review, uh, contributing a photo along with that review goes a long way. Our company does directly manage quite a few business profiles. And one of the best practices I can share with you is to not set it and forget it with your photography in your profile. Um, unfortunately, we see a lot of businesses that upload the five or 10 marketing images that they use everywhere. And a couple of years later, they've never uh, come back to um, adding new images. However, in uh, locations where the owner is uploading maybe even just four or five new photos every month, those profiles are seeing a 10 to 30% lift in their visibility. So we think there's something in Google's algorithm that looks at the, the recency of photos in a profile as an indicator that this place is happening. Things are, things are going on, the business owner is sharing images, customers are sharing images, and it's likely more popular than other locations. Now, photo quality uh, is also important as well. This was a great experiment. This is the exact same plate of food uh, one is taken from an upwards angle with great lighting, looks fairly gourmet. One on the right really kind of looks like a plate of raw fish, certainly not as appealing. And the proof is in the viewership. The image on the left received 10 times more views from potential customers than the image on the right. So a few more best practices in terms of imagery. Um, First and foremost, only upload photos that you either created yourself or you know you own the rights to. Uh, Google stays out of that legal uh, tangle there. Um, it's up to you and the owner of the photography. You don't wanna use filters or logos or any sort of overlay text. We see those sorts of images get pushed to the bottom um, of, the, of the gallery. You also wanna to try to keep your photo gallery evergreen. You want to give people who have never seen your business a chance to see what it looks like um, most of the time. 
Now that isn't to say don't put up your a picture of your Halloween decorations or your Christmas lights or fall leaves or anything like that, but you don't want to have a disproportionate uh, number of seasonal images in there. Uh, lastly, and this is sort of a counterintuitive uh, as marketers, but we want to make sure that our our interiors don't have people that we can see the space and get a sense of the depth and breadth and scale of the space. You also want to avoid uh, identifiable faces, other sort of personally identifiable information like kids' names on backpacks and license plate numbers. Uh, also make sure if you are including people that you have uh, release forms. Uh, to add photos, you want to look for that add photo button in our interface. Uh, this will also allow you to upload your logo and choose what cover photo you want for your profile. Um, so you can see an example of how this looks on the mobile uh, application as well. Really easy to add photos directly from your phone into that profile. Uh, so those are our five fundamentals. Keeping uh, your hours up to date is critical. Categories influence where your business can appear and attributes further support customer confidence as do uh, contributing menus, uh, products, and services. Responding to 30% of your reviews will create up to an 80% lift in conversions. And posting just four photos a month can also create a lift in your exposure. I wanted to wrap up by calling out some of the free tools available to you from Travel Oregon. Um, first is the local platform. Uh, local is an Oregon-based company that offers you a free way to manage and maximize your Google business profile. Uh, it, it really nice, easy to use tool that is absolutely free. Thanks to Travel Oregon for, for uh, tours and businesses throughout the state. Um, and there are a couple of resources I mentioned earlier, and, and I see Cecilia dropped in the chat. Anyone who wants to meet with my team one-on-one, -on -one, um, address any technical issues you're coming up against or individual questions that you have, we're happy to do that. Um, Travel Oregon also has a great industry.travelorgan.com slash listings uh, page on their site in addition <laughs> Excuse me. In addition to this content, uh, there are other recordings of uh, longer uh, best practices sessions that we have done uh, and uh, access to local and other tips and toolkits there. So um, definitely check it out if you want to learn more. Okay. I think with that, we'll turn it back over to Cecilia. I think I Got one minute to spare. Yes, you did it, even with the intros. Thank you so much, Kim.